To assess a student's document, I need to open up the spreadsheet. Now, when I set up the spreadsheet, you saw that it had all the students' names and emails, etc. When I go into the spreadsheet, the first thing I see is sheet one and it's empty. Don't freak out. It's not really an empty document. Down at the bottom of the page, there are different tabs. The first tab is student rubric submissions, and this shows us the student self-assessment and peer assessments, and it has all the different scores that they got, and any comments are at the end. Now, the next tab is the one that we used when we ingested the assignment from Google Classroom, and you can see it has the student information, and it has links to the documents and to the Gubrick file, etc. On the right-hand side of the screen, we can see columns that will have the grades that are assigned from the rubric when the teacher uses the rubric to assess the students. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back up to add-ons. And in the add-ons menu, I'm going to choose Doctopus, and I'm going to open up Doctopus. It's going to open it up on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, here you can see I've already attached my Gubrick. I can change the Gubrick if I need to. I can also go in and um, choose to average the scores. So on the student peer reviews, if they had multiple students review, I can get an average of those scores. Um, I can also refresh edits and counts. And I'm going to do this so you can see what's going to happen. It's going to give me more information. More columns are adding in over here on the right, such as word count, revisions done by the students, teacher comments, student comments, etc. So it's going to give you a bunch of extra information that might be useful to you to see how many times the students were self um, peer assessed or how many times that student peer assessed other students in the classroom. I can also choose look for new submissions and so this is going to check and see if any of the students who didn't turn it in before actually pressed turn in in Google Classroom. Right now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to grade the assignments using the rubric. So I'm going to close the Doctopus um, tab on the right-hand side. And then what I'm going to do is, for my first student on the list, I'm going to click where it says Assess Document and open up that link. This opens up the student's document down at the bottom of the page. Here, I can review her conclusion. And then up at the top, I can look through the different tabs. These are the different columns I had on the spreadsheet that I made of the rubric. So the first one is the purpose and the subject, and I can choose which one I believe it is. And I can go through each of the different tabs and choose the different points that she earned for each of the different parts on the conclusion. Now on the right hand side of the screen, if I kind of make this a little bigger, I can see that I have some other options. I can choose to give overall comments to the students, or I can give comments within the doc. I can also choose to email the scores to the student if you have email set up within your Google domain. It will attach the rubric to the bottom of the document as well once I press submit. I can also change the document, so the students, right now, once they've submitted it in Google Classroom, they can view the document, but they're not an editor. When they cannot, when they're not an editor, they cannot view comments that I've added to the document. So when I return this, within Gubrick here, within Doctopus, if I have this box checked, the students will be able to comment, and they will be able to see the comments that have been written to them. So I like to check that, and then once I press submit, they will now be able to be, have commenting rights on their document and see the comments. Now I can also auto advance on submit, so once I press submit, it's going to go to the next student's document automatically. Now I can go to the next student, I can jump around by clicking on the name up at the top right. Um, but let's say I am ready to submit this document. I can go ahead and press submit. I'm gonna, first I'm gonna not do auto advance just for this one example, because um, I want you to see what happens when I press submit. So I'm gonna press submit.
And now if I look at the bottom of her document, we can see that the rubric rating was submitted today and you can see what score she got on this. There are no comments listed here because I didn't write comments up above. Now if I wanted to change this rubric, I can go ahead and make any changes up top and resubmit and it will put a second copy of the rubric down at the bottom of the page. Now I do also have the option to do some voice comments. Up at the top of the screen, I can record an audio comment. I can pause my recording and stop my recording. If I choose to record my audio comments, you will have to give permission for the microphone on your computer um, to be accessed. All right, and so it's really easy to go from student to student. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to load, but I can just go from student to student, which is really great. I don't have to go back into Google Classroom and open things up. It will just go from one student to the next, which is really, really nice. After I've gone through and filled out rubrics for students, it automatically populates the spreadsheet. So if I scroll over towards the right hand side of the spreadsheet, you can see that all of the columns have the scores that I entered. There's also a place for comment, which I didn't type in particularly for that student. And it has a count on the number of rubrics that I filled out. I actually filled out two um, submissions for this student. And this is great because if you regrade a student, you do have a record of all of the um, rubric scoring that you did. Down at the bottom right hand side of your um, tabs or pages within your sheet, you can see your multiple submissions for that student and this will list all of the teacher rubric inputs. But if I want the actual grade for my student, so over here there is a column for grade and written feedback. This doesn't automatically calculate the rubric scores. But I like to do that by just doing a sum feature. So I put in the enter symbol, sum, and then I have the open parenthesis, and I highlight the columns that have the rubric score. And then I press a, cl a close parenthesis and return. So this student got a 98 out of 100 on this rubric. But now all I have to do is scroll down, like grab onto that little blue box and scroll to the bottom. And right now they're all zeros because I haven't graded them. But when I fill out the next rubrics using Gubric, it will automatically calculate the grade. Here I can do written feedback that is different than the feedback on the document. Maybe I might tell certain students if they got below a certain score, like please re reword rework this, revise it, resubmit it, whatever. Then I can go back into my add-ons and Doctopus menu and I can choose to, when I open up the panel, the tools panel, I can choose to send them a feedback email and I can include the grade, I can include the written feedback that they got. So this is a separate email than the email that was automatically sent when I filled out the rubric. And that's over here on the right, send feedback email, and I can customize it to include whatever columns of data I want.